Good morning. Day 227. Cooking down the refrigerator, freezer, and working pantry meals. Aren't these gorgeous? They're from my garden. I love the purples and blues and pinks. And one little cone flower. So what I've been doing is cutting out the hydrangeas that are like stuck down on the bottom and inside the bush so I don't take away from the beauty of the outside garden. So I've been thinking a lot since I got up today about getting back to the slow living, the hoogay lifestyle. I've been doing a lot of things in my home, which really makes me happy, but I've kind of had myself a little bit stressed about it because I want to get it done. You know, the old get her done thing that's always in the back of your mind. But I'm going to take my time. I'm going to get it done, but I'm going to take my time. There's really no rush. It's not like I'm having a big wedding here or a big party here in a month. And it's coming along. I want to work on it a little bit every day, but I don't want that drive to get it done, get it done. I've been finding that happening somewhat. Not terrible, but it's self-imposed, and I don't want to do that. There's nowhere that I really have to be other than an occasional medical appointment with my mom. That will probably change at some point with her being 93. But for now, I'm going to enjoy the, the slower life and some of the solitude. I'm a bit of a loner anyway. I always have been. I enjoy my alone time. Too much activity and party and that makes me a little, I don't even know how to describe the term. It makes me, it's not anxious, it's um, uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. And then I have to pull back and have some time just with me. Whether that's to putter around in my garden, to putter around in my home, or to write a journal, or to do a little painting, or a craft project, whatever it is I want to do. So a lot of us, we have other people drive our time, and I'm guilty of that myself. You know, hurry up, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. You know, you got to be here at this time, you got to be there at that time. And there's really no need, you know. Live your own dream and your own time frame and not always somebody else's, no matter who it is. Yeah, I'm saying, you know, you have to do a little compromise and you do this with me and I'll do that with you. But if it's always one way, that's not good. And you sort of lose yourself in the process. So don't lose yourself. You know, have your relationships, and it's not healthy to lose yourself in the process. So I'm not sure what I'm having for breakfast today. I'm going to have to peruse the refrigerator and see what's on the menu. All right, I'll be back in a little while with day 227. Well, good morning. Let's have a little coffee chat. Do you want to grab yourself a coffee and come into my kitchen? That's finally starting to get done. I think maybe today I will do those up there. Maybe I'll decoupage that. I'm not sure. All right, come and have a cup of coffee with me. Coffee time. Cheers.
So it's early in the morning, and I've been thinking about what is causing me to get into this, you know, when, you, when your innards start churning and feeling like you have to hurry, 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 and I wanted to get to the bottom of that because I used to get those feelings when I was younger and in nursing school and a single mom and working and, you know, life was just crazy. But that hasn't been the case for me in a long time. Now, there are certain things in my life that caused me to have to get things done in a certain amount of time frame. Let's say in a week, um, I had like four or five days to get my things done and, you know, and there wasn't a whole lot of time with all the projects that I have going. There wasn't a whole lot of time for me just to relax on a day and do nothing because the other two days I had to go somewhere. So that's not the case anymore, which makes me happy. But I'm still sort of in that mode and I'm trying to get back to slowing down and, you know, telling myself that I have all week to get this done. But we all think well, most of us, I shouldn't say all of us, but most of us think in time frames. You know, we have a day, we have a week, we have a year to get blah, blah, blah done. And rather than saying, okay, um, I don't have to get this done in a day or in a week or in a month, um, which I think is healthier. And I'm not saying that you should leave everything just lay there because then you'll never get anything done. But what I'm saying is getting rid of that drive and that churning to, to constantly produce and produce and produce. So I have days now where I purposefully don't do anything. You know, I'll sit in my chair and I'll watch some YouTube or I'll make a YouTube video, or I'll do some reading. I like to learn, and even if I'm watching YouTube, most of the videos I watch are videos where I can learn something. I like to learn about uh, space and all the fascinating things that are going on um, in that realm. Um, all the things, the like the James Webb Telescope, uh, all the things that uh, it's discovering, and um, you know, I I really enjoy watching things like that, or learning about uh, how other people do things like gardening or or um, uh, you know anything I'm interested in, decoupage, gardening, painting making jewelry, you know, all those things. So, I'd like to get back to not thinking so much in time frames. So, as long as my house is relatively clean, you know, I don't have to eat off the floor. Um, I'd like it to be sort of cohesive if, if company drops by, but that doesn't even happen very often. So, I'm trying to get back to the slower living and thinking a different way and not being so driven and um, because that's not really my nature. It's things that I've learned from other people that think you have to be productive most of the time or everything has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect either. It just has to be satisfactory to you and what you want it to be. Impressing other people, I think, is what drives a lot of us. 
you know, you want people to come in and, oh, your house is so pretty, or your house is so clean, or how do you get all this done, or, you know, just things like that. Um, that usually means a lot to us, but it really it shouldn't mean much of anything to us, you know, other than what we want for ourselves. It doesn't matter what other people think. If you like a lot of tchotchkes in your house and you don't mind taking care of them and dusting them, and then by all means have a lot of tchotchkes in your house if that makes you happy. It doesn't matter if other people say, oh, that's, you know, way too much stuff, or if you're a minimalist and you don't like a lot of stuff and people come in and say, oh, your house is too stark, I could never live this way. Well, okay, that's fine. You know, that's good for you. Then, you know, you make your house the way you want it, and I'll make my house the way I want it. So, anyway, um... I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, and um, I think what's driving me to sort of head in that direction, if I'm not mindful, is I'm getting older. And sometimes, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I have to get this done before I'm too old to do it. And for some of us that have problems with physical problems where we can't, you know, carry boulders anymore and, and we're not as strong as we were when we were younger. It is a legitimate issue. So that's kind of what's always nagging me in the back of my mind is, you know, you better get this done before you're too old to do it and blah, blah. It's like with my garden. Um, we're, we're not allowed, with the association here, we're not allowed to have in-ground vegetable gardens. I don't know why, but we're not. Because we own actually part of the land that our houses are on, even though they're attached clusters. It's not like a condominium, it's a, it's a townhouse. But we own some of the land that surrounds our house. It's not a big area. It's a postage stamp size. But still, um, I don't personally, I don't see what the difference is if it's neat, whether you're planting tomatoes or cucumbers or whatever you're planting. If you're planting that or if you're planting flowers, I don't see what the difference is, what you put in the ground. But anyway, um, those are the rules of the association. So that's why I had to put everything into uh, containers. And in the back, all my vegetables are in containers. And um, the flowers and things are in containers because I used to have a beautiful, beautiful garden back there. But when I got the dogs, you know, they started trampling on everything and running it over. So I can't really plant flowers in the ground back there because they would last like two seconds and then they'd be gone. So I have to put everything in pots back there now. But I had to, everything was kind of low to the ground with the city pickers. So I had to come up with a way to raise it up. And a lot of you guys already know this, but those of you that are newer to the channel might not know it. I had to raise everything up. So that was one thing that was driving me to get that done because of my physical limitations and I can't lift a lot of heavy things anymore. And I know that in a couple of years, maybe five years, however long it'll be, uh, I wouldn't be able to maintain um, low pots on the ground, so I had to lift everything up. Now, in my living room, that I had two very heavy pieces of furniture, both my sofa and my love seat. They're very, they were very high quality pieces, and um, they were very heavy, but 
I thought to myself, I could hardly move them. And it was getting harder and harder to keep my floor clean in there. So that was something that in the back of my mind was driving me. You know, unfortunately the dogs ruined the sofa and the love seat, but in a way it was a blessing in disguise because now I got much lighter weight furniture. I got chairs I could move around. The, the sofa that I just got, the love seat I just got, I can move around, I can clean under it, no problem. So those sorts of things were in the back of my mind to hurry up and get them done. The same thing with my kitchen shelving. You know, it's something that I've been wanting to do for years and haven't done. And I thought, you know, getting up on the ladder, and uh, it's probably not the safest thing to do as you get older. So that was kind of driving a time frame as well. But I got all those projects done. Now my thing is um, getting some of the things out and onto the curb for the bulk. Um, and my love seat has to go out there. I still have my old freezer in the garage uh, that doesn't work anymore. That needs to go out. But for that, I need help. I can't do that by myself. So I have to wait until somebody is available in the family, and they all work. So um, that kind of is a driving force, getting rid of things that I can't use anymore or that I don't want anymore because our tastes uh, change. So anyway, what drives you if you ever get into that mode? What drives you to feel like you have to hurry up? I, I'm really curious to know if I'm the only one that's a little bit like that, or, or if a lot of you are like that, or most of you are like that, or if some of you are just, eh, you know, it'll get done when it gets done. All right, well, I'm going to have some breakfast in a little bit here. I just wanted to have a chat about that, and I was just curious how other people um, feel about the subject of time and urgency and uh, maybe get some good ideas for myself or the rest of you that we can follow to live a slower lifestyle, a more huge lifestyle. Um, so leave us a comment below and let us know. All right, I'll be back shortly with some breakfast. All right, well, <clears throat> time for breakfast. And I grabbed some things out of my refrigerator. So I have to use up this romaine. It's starting to go bad. I had to cut some of it away. Cucumbers from my garden, tomatoes from my garden, and oh my gosh, fresh garden cucumber. I can't even tell you how much more delicious it is than store-bought. I want to finish up this seitan because it's not going to be good much longer. And this is the last of the French bread that I got from Walmart, so I'm using that up. And I have this good plant smoked Gouda that I need to use. So I'm going to take one of those. I want to use that up. And I'm going to put some of this Italian cheese dressing on here as well. So, I need to get some mayo. Alright, so I'm just going to spread some mayo on either side of the, the bread. It'll keep it a little bit from getting soggy, I hope. Because I'm going to be putting some of this salad with dressing on there. So anyway, um, I'm working on my kitchen, just getting it a little more organized and cleaned up because I've got a lot of stuff all over the place again. 
I've kind of let that go while I was working on this and working on that. And I really need to get my living room and my kitchen um, in good working order so that I can move on to my dining room. So I'm going to eat half of this anyway. Let's see, I've got four slices left. So, um, yeah, this, this vegan um, deli slices, it's by Tofurky. And it uh, it's not cheap. It's it's like around five dollars for a little tiny bit, but they say five slices is one serving. But I don't use five slices. But for this sandwich, I want to use it up. I'm going to use four. So that's the end of that. And then I think I'm going to have a banana too. I bought a banana. Uh, the other day when I did a grocery shop. So I'm going to put some of this smoked Gouda on here. Now this, once you put it in the fridge, it, it gets pretty hard. It's more like a sliceable cheese than uh, a spreadable cheese. I The taste is good, but I don't know if I'd get this again. It's not real, real creamy. But, like I said, the taste is good. And this is like a smoked Gouda. It's good with, like, crackers if you slice it up. But, in my opinion, if you're looking for a, slight, uh, a spreadable cheese, this is probably not the one to get unless uh, you don't refrigerate it. If you leave it at room temperature, it does soften. But... Um, yeah, that's just my opinion, but the, t the taste is good, and they have different, uh, different kinds of it. This one's the smoked Gouda, and I think they have like a pepper jack and a plain, I, I forget, but I just got the smoked Gouda. So, okay, there we have our meat and our cheese, our protein. Might as well eat that one. A little odd. Okay. So the banana peel needs to go to my worms. The um, the lettuce that was starting to go bad will go to my worms. They like it once it starts to get a little funky because they're composting worms. So they they like pretty much garbage. So that'll be going to the worms. And then here on my lettuce, I'm going to eat some of this as a salad, a side salad, and the other part I'm going to eat um, on my sandwich. So I always put some salt and pepper even though I'm putting dressing. That's just because that's the way I like it. And You know, I have one small pepper left. I think I'm going to add that too. Yes, I have one small red pepper. I did buy peppers um, when I did my shop because um, this was the last one I had, but they're larger peppers. So um, I want to use this up. So it's another thing out of my fridge. So I used up the, the meat, I used up the bread, I used up one of the lettuces, I have one left, and now I'm going to add some of the pepper and use that up. So cooking down the refrigerator, um, I'm just going to put that in some rings here because that's good on a sandwich. And some of the cucumber. Yeah, this is really, really tasty cucumber. Mm. 
Mm. So good. And these are the bait alpha cucumbers. They have male and female uh, flowers on the same plant. They still need to be, you know, pollinated, but... All right. I like this Italian three cheese. I mean, I did buy some Gerards when I went on my shop. But I like this too. And it's by Wishbone. All right. I'm going to eat this lunch. Well, it's brunch. And then um, I got to check my other lettuce. Because, like I said, my lettuce is starting to go bad. So that needs to get eaten up. And I give my worms, I feed them the paper towels too because they eat paper too. And it absorbs some of the wetness from, from the bin. All right. Mm. Well, I'm going to have to use my fingers. Put some lettuce on here. Right. The lettuce would be better on the other half. Here we go. So I've used up a lot of things before they went bad. So here's my brunch. Day 227. All right. I will be back in a little bit. And we'll see what else is up today. I just wanted to come back on and talk a little bit about organizing. Uh, it's a process that I'm going through. I go through it pretty much all the time. But um, some of the things that I, I do and I've learned that help me to get organized. And it's not necessarily getting rid of everything. Um, but how to keep it so it's not a big mess when you walk into each particular room. Now, this could work for any room, and it's a process that I'm currently working on because I've done a lot of decluttering. More needs to be done, but um, the organizing has to be the correct or organizing and by that I mean if you're organizing your pots and they're you know way across the room in in a cupboard and you have to walk to that cupboard to get your pots to cook something you're probably less likely to want to cook because it's not convenient so organizing things where it's convenient and where you use them, in my opinion, is important. So as you're going through your rooms, um, find your trouble spots. What trouble spots are in your home? So for me, in, uh, as an example, I'll take my kitchen. Now my kitchen table is my biggest problem area in the kitchen. Uh, it accumulates all kinds of things. But think about what clutter consistently accumulates in that spot. So for me, the kitchen table is either papers, uh, incoming mail, things like that, uh, papers that I feel like I should save. I'm good about getting rid of junk mail and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that sort of thing. But I'm talking about papers that um, I think I might be able to use down the road or uh, information. It's information papers that I tend to keep because I think I'll need that information. 
and I don't really file it away somewhere because then I forget about it so sometimes it'll sit on the kitchen table and then eventually I either do put it away or it gets trashed but for me it's paper clutter and, and another thing that I tend to do is my projects at the kitchen table so right now I have my I love my dog frame I have the paints um, I, I have um, a, a brush with glue from my decoupage project because I'm not done with it so that will uh, tend to accumulate on my kitchen table so if you analyze what items tend to clutter up because usually when clutter accumulates somewhere it's always the same um, the same paper the same projects you know and it, it it always ends up the same so um why do these items um another question to ask yourself is why do these items end up in that spot well i already explained the papers you know for me it's like well you know, I, I read it and I think I might need that information later. It's it's a paper from a, a roofing company or a window company that I think I might be able to use down the road. So um, why do they accumulate on the table? Well, it's because I spend most of my time at the table and if I put it somewhere else out of sight, out of mind, I'll forget about it. So I leave it there. Um, another question to ask yourself is what items can I put elsewhere? Okay, like my crafting things. Um, when I'm done, they don't really need to sit on the kitchen table. Um, so that's one thing, an example of what I could put elsewhere. I could put another area of things where I could grab them and maybe in a cupboard or whatever where I could put that away and have it easily accessible when I want to do that project again. Um, what Another question is, what can I use to corral the clutter and make it more aesthetically pleasing? Like for me, um, my projects, whatever they are, I could get a tray that I could keep all my supplies on and then I could very easily if it's on a tray and not scattered all over the table I could very easily move that tray to somewhere else until I'm ready to finish working on that project or that craft or whatever it is. So making a designated spot for that that is not my kitchen table would, would be a prudent thing to do. And for that, I could use a basket, um, a tray, you know, anything that would make it, corral it and make it easy to move on off and on my table. For the paper, I, again, I could use a basket, maybe a flat basket with some handles that, that's the size of uh, papers. Um, or I could use an envelope that I could leave a pretty envelope, um, you know, paper size what is it, 8 by 10 or 8 by 11, whatever paper size you have, um, that I could actually leave on the table. That way I'll know there's papers in there that I can look at or that need, need to be looked at again in the future, but it's not in my face. So thinking of things to put where that particular clutter accumulates, whatever it may be, whether it's your crafting projects, your paper clutter, um, and making it more aesthetically pleasing because that's where you want to store those things. Um, like if you come into your foyer and you're constantly throwing your keys, your purse, your this, your that on, onto a, a table or something and it looks a, a mess, you could hang up some hooks where you could actually put your purse, you could 
put a little dish on on uh, if if you have a table or something there. You could use a little dish where you could put your sunglasses and your your keys or the little loose items that that are always spread out uh, everywhere. So you could corral those things because they're just going to keep accumulating there anyway because that's where that particular item is used the most. So there's no point to putting that stuff somewhere else because you're not going to keep it organized if you do that. So um, hanging up your purse or your hat or whatever it is you wear every day or your even your coat, you know, uh, just having maybe a hanger for the coat you wear every day and not shoving it away in a closet if you don't have one in your entryway. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about some simple organizing tips and what works for me because I always have the same clutter in the same place and if it's not convenient I'm not going to keep it organized. So anyway that's just a little organization tip that has helped me. Uh, what are some of the organizing tips that you guys use that work for you that maybe the rest of us haven't thought of. Leave us a comment below and let us know. Um, and I love when you guys talk to each other on, 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 in the comments. That, that's really neat. I like reading all your interactions. Oh well, I guess Lizzie had something to say. But anyway, leave us a comment below and uh, I'll be back in a little while with uh, some dinner or maybe a project. I'm not sure what I'm doing. All right. All right. Evening time. Let's see what's for dinner. Day 227. Okay, so I'm getting some space in my refrigerator. That's a good thing. Um, let's see. One of these days I'm going to go to Aldi's and buy some more cheese. That's the best place around here to get cheese. But in the meantime, I'm going to have some American cheese. And I'm going to make these burgers. I'm not going to eat them both, but I'm going to cook them both going to have a cheeseburger because I have all the fixings. And back here I have some buns. So now I only have hamburger and hot dog buns in there. I do have some bread in the freezer, but I don't want to get out a lot of bread again until I use up some of the things I already have. So here I still have a zucchini from my garden, but I'm not going to make that today. And I don't know, maybe some pickle relish and uh, let's see, what do we have down here? Um, apples. No, we don't want apples on the burger. Uh, I'll have to look back there. I think I have some pickles. I'll have some of those. And I like mayonnaise and mustard on my burgers. So I'm going to have some of this mayo must. And I'm just going to make this a very simple cheeseburger. Um, I have some tomatoes I want to use up. So that's going to be it. All right, so I will meet you at the stove. Okay, I'm using my little mini griddle. I don't know if that was the best idea because this actually produces a lot of juice and it just about overflowed. But I use this smokehouse maple to season my burger. 
and I toasted my buns and put cheese on both sides because I like cheesy burgers. And um, I put the mayo must on here. So I'm just having a burger and, and some chips for dinner. I'm, I'm not real hungry again. I had a salad for, for lunch and my salad is not good anymore, so I miss the boat. But I am going to put some tomato on here. So I'll put some tomato. I have some pickle, some mayo must, and I'm going to put some onion on there. All right, I'll be back once I get this all put together. Okay, well, I've got my second burger cooking there. And normally I would put a little bit of lettuce on here too, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pickle on. I don't like a ton of pickle, but I do like pickle. There we go. And some tomato. And this tomato is growing babies, but it's not tomato planting season, so um, I'm not going to do anything with those. And then I'm going to put some onion on here. Not too much because onion can be pretty overpowering, and these are just regular cooking onions. They're not sweet onions. So I think that'll be enough. Put the tomato on. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of the smokehouse maple on the tomato too. All right. It's hot. I don't want to burn myself. So see what I mean? It's pretty juicy. So it's not the best thing to cook these Beyond Burgers in. Alright, well, that will be it for my burger. And then I'm just going to go ahead and have some chips with this. I bought some chips the other day. I hadn't had any of those in a while. So I'll be back in a minute. It's not real exciting, but I'm using what I have. And now I want to use up these Beyond Burgers. So I'll be back once I get my chips. Okay, so here's my dinner, day 227. Just a plain, simple little burger with chips. And here is a burger for another meal, so those are cooked up. And uh, so I'll give this a taste, and I'm sure it'll be good. Might be messy. Mm-hmm. Delicious. So cook up what you have in your fridge, and even if it's not what you always eat, because like I said, usually I would eat this with uh, lettuce and tomato, and but I'm just going to eat it plain. Alright, so here it is, dinner, day 227. I'll be back in a little bit and wrap things up. Well, I had a little bit of that tomato left, and I had a little bit of the onion left. I cut those up, and I did buy cucumbers, but now my cucumbers, I've, I've got a couple from the garden. The one I ate this morning, and another one is coming ripe, but I still have the store-bought cucumbers, so I'm just going to make a quick little cucumber salad here um, and the dogs like cucumbers too 
except for Chloe. She's she's not real crazy about them, but she does like lettuce. So I'm just going to cut up some of the cucumber, tomato, onion, Chloe, you don't like cucumber. You're late to the party again. You're always late to the party. All right. And this I'll let sit until tomorrow because I always think cucumbers are better once they sit in the dressing. And this, this is just enough for a little salad for me tomorrow. And then I have one more burger that I can eat too. So lots of choices of things to eat. So let me see what I'm going to put in here. Okay, well here's what I'm going to put in my little salad here. Um, this is lemon pepper, so that's always good in there. Put some lemon pepper in, and then some garlic salt. And cucumbers, I think, take a lot of salt. And then I'm just going to add this wishbone dressing. And that's going to be it. And then tomorrow I'll taste it and see if it needs any more salt. I don't want to put too much of the dressing in there. I don't want it swimming in there because cucumbers, as you know, let off a lot of, a lot of liquid, as do tomatoes. But that's it. Just a refreshing little summer salad for tomorrow. Right. So there it is. Getting ready for another meal. All right, that's going in the fridge. And that's all I have for you today. So I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.